Good morning, everybody. Hello. It's so good to see all of you here. Happy Sunday. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dustin, and this channel, Modern Metaphysica, is about all things occult and esoteric related with a very heavy lean on the tarot. Uh, if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back and hanging out. Today, we are going to be doing another new releases in uh, tarot and occult books. So we're going to be looking at and shopping for some of the upcoming releases um, that have caught my eye and my attention. So uh, this is in no way, shape, or form a comprehensive list of all the new things coming out. If you're looking for that, there's tons of other creators out there who do, th do that. I'm bringing you the things that interest me the most, because um, hopefully that's why you're here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I have a I have a good list of things to share with you guys today. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, as far as housekeeping things go, uh, the revamp of uh, all of the things that I got feedback from from you guys about the memberships is in progress, and things are going great. I'm really kind of hoping that this week we might get to launch memberships. Um, so stay tuned for that. There will be a video and all kinds of fun stuff for that. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that you want me to read or see, please do at Modern Metaphysicate in chat so that I don't miss it. Um, it highlights it nice and bright on my screen for me, or you can put it in all caps. Sometimes chat does get a little, uh, crazy and busy and I do miss things. So, yeah. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I see Jonathan and Lisa and Sophie and Aspasia and oh my gosh, there's, there's so many of you guys here already. Ivy, hello. I saw Emerald Fern earlier. Um, Pamela, good morning, Shelby. Good morning, Comfy Cozy. Hello, good morning to all of you. Iridescent, hello. So yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody has some coffee or an adult beverage. Whatever you, uh, your little heart desires. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna dive into some, some new releases. So, uh, if you are interested in anything that I am showcasing on today's episode, you can always find links to all of the good stuff down in the description box below. In fact, uh, I think I didn't put those in. So let me do that really quickly. These might not show up if you're watching live already, but um, if you refresh, it will probably populate the description. So there should be links in the description box down below with everything um, that I'm showcasing today. So if you're interested in picking it up, you can find all that good stuff down there. You can also find all of my social media down there, so where you can reach out and connect with me. You can also find a link to my personal website where you can book a tarot reading with me. So if you're interested in any of that, um, be sure to check all that out. Sophie says, any bets that isn't coffee in my cup? This is definitely coffee. Definitely. Most definitely coffee. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Oh, I don't want to spill it. It's a latte, in fact. Just a plain vanilla latte. I'm putting those barista skills I learned in college to use. <laughs> um... All right, well, let's dive in, because uh, we got a lot of cool things to share with you guys today. Hot chocolate and a can of Mountain Dew. Okay, I was worried, <laughs> Claire, and then clarified that they're not mixed together. I was a little worried. <laughs> I was a little concerned there for a minute. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. All right, let's dive in. Let's. We're going to start off with books. As always, because we know I love some books, and I know that you guys love books. So, let us do that. The first book I have on my list to share with you guys today is this lovely title. This is called Horns of the Goddess. Um, this is a new release from Red, uh, Wiser Red Wheel Publishing. Um, it's by Dolores Cannon, who has written a number... She's kind of considered one of the kind of foremost leaders in... Uh, Past Life Regression, and this is her latest title, which basically is, um, 
it, it recounts the sessions that um, she did with a, a, a set of clientele that sort of traced their past lives and relived and saw things. So it's kind of like an account of past life regressions and things like that. Um, specifically three volunteers who went back and were living, uh, that recalled living in like the time of the Druids and um, things like that. So this kind of stuff to me is really interesting. I have a very um, deep interest in past lives and things like that. Oh. I don't know why hold on we're gonna we're gonna adjust something here because my little face is like covered by my logo i thought this why is it over there we're gonna adjust something really quickly because we want you guys to be able to see me boop there we go okay so <laughs> Um, yeah, like this one, this one looks really interesting to me. Um, I have read one of her other books and, and it was good. She's a, a, a very kind of candid author to read. And, um, she also has written about like, uh, a number of other things like Nostradamus and UFOs and things like that. Um, she's quite versed in the paranormal and kind of occult space. So... Yeah, this one looked really interesting, and I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, reading this one. I I like doing past lives life regressions is really interesting to me, but reading accounts of other people's past life regressions and experiences is always even more fascinating to me, especially when those things can be corroborated, um, in in real life, right? Like I think those are probably the foremost fascinating ones to me. So. Yeah, check it out. Oh, Pam Pam Journal Create says I love uh, Dolores Cannon. Definitely checking that out. Yeah, so check it out. Anyone else, has anyone else in chat read any of her other books? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you're watching in the future, drop a comment down below. Okay. So next up on the list, we have the Alistair Crowley Manual: Thelemic Magic for Modern Times. Um, this is in pre-order status. This is being published by Watkins Books. And um, it is basically a no-nonsense modern take by Marco Visconti on... Um, on Crowley's tradition, right? Like, it, <laughs> it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um talks about the body of light, uh, prana, um, the hermetic elements, the quintessence, which has to do with alchemy, um, the pentagram, hexagram rituals, astral light invoking the middle pillar. Um, so yeah, this one looks really interesting. Um, you know, I think there's definitely been a growing interest in Crowley and his writings lately, and his writing style is very obtuse, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and so, you know, having this kind of, uh, text, I think will be useful for people who don't, don't want to dig through, you know, like Libra four or something like that. So this should be really interesting. Um, and you know, it's Watkins is probably one publisher that I have the utmost respect for. Like they're, they're very selective about what they publish and they publish a really great breadth of, new age spiritual and occultism um and their stuff is always really good so um i don't i'm not super familiar with the, this uh this author so if anyone has any insights about the author let me know but this did catch my attention and i i slapped it on the list because it's alistair crowley so which it, you know alistair crowley was probably one of the most influential uh writers who garnered my interest in uh higher ceremonial magic and, and things like that and digging more into like uh, manuscripts and and finding the bits and pieces of kind of what he cobbled together both in eastern and western occultist traditions so yeah jonathan daly says i found a used curly book that was a series of letters written between him um oh interesting I did talk about a book uh, about the there. There is a book called Dear Alistair 
which I featured uh, a while ago on the channel, that um, is a series of letters from him and from him to uh, Lady Fruita Harris when they were creating the Thoth Tarot, and it's a really wonderful book. Um, in fact, I, I think I did a review on it. So, um, hello. Oh, Esoterica did a, 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 a interview with him. Oh, I did not know that. I haven't, I have like a chunk of his videos on my watch list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I haven't had time to get to that, uh, to, to get to that. I'm a little behind on his channel. I actually just finished watching, um, for those of you who don't know, Esoterica is a really wonderful educational, um, sort of academic perspective on occult and esoteric traditions. It's really wonderful. Um, it is pretty dense though. So if you're, if you're new or a beginner, I probably wouldn't say that's a great place to start. Um, I would probably recommend you to go to Foolish Fish's channel first. Um, but they, both of those channels are really wonderful when it comes to the more occult and esoteric side of things. So, yeah. All right. What do we have up next? Oh, this one, this one I'm pretty excited for actually. So, for those of you guys that are like me, who um, re when you when you pull out like these kinds of books, right? When you're reading about um, really highly esoteric topics, I don't have like a, a, a ceremonial ceremonial book next to me, do I? I do have a, a couple of lovely new texts that just arrived. Um, the Devil's Plantation and Wished Waters just arrived from Troy Books, and they're sitting here on my desk. Um, but for those of you who are more visually inclined, like I am, where you like pictures, <laughs> um, and, and, and you comprehend things better when you can see them done or when you can see them illustrated, you know, one aspect that I found early on in my practice was, you know, I would read things like Israel Gardi and I'd be like, what, what? <laughs> because it's all very descriptive, but at the same time, you know, it's, it can be a little confusing. And so, um, this next book, which is called, um, it's called, it's got quite a long title. It's called Adventures of the Magus. Um, this is the Knox edition, but basically what it is, is it's a sort of manual on how to do a lot of, um, the ceremonial traditions, right? Uh, in kind of picture form, which I think is really cool. So it, it has a lot of sort of uh, Thelemic rituals and high ceremonial magic rituals and things like that explained in this book. Um, there's a lot of really good reference material in here, like the hours of the day and the, correspond the pl corresponding planetary hours. There's a whole section in here on the middle pillar, which... If you, like me, the first time you read through the middle pillar, you were like, what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> this would have been invaluable, right? <coughs> um, there's beautiful pages about uh, the plan the planets and Orphic hymns that go with the planets. So if you're someone who works with the Orphic hymns like I do, um, you'll, you might find this really interesting. Um, there's like descriptions and illustrations of... Uh, the angels and yeah, I mean, it's, it's full of, of really well done kind of graphic illustrations. They're very graphic based. Right. Um, and I think that this is like going to become a valuable text in terms of, in the same way that like the magician's tables by, uh, Skinner has become for me, like when I'm referencing or cross-referencing stuff, I think this is going to be a similar text to that. So I do have this on the way when I get it. Um, this will be one that I can easily review, right? Because if you're new to the channel or if you haven't watched for very long, the reason why I don't just pump out reviews left and right is because when I review things, I use them, right? So when I do deck reviews, it's a deck that I've worked with. Um, it, it When I do a book review, it's a book that I've read, right? So 
my reviews are never unless I say otherwise because occasionally I'll do like unboxing and first impressions and things like that but when you watch a review on my channel it's almost always a uh, full-on actual review so um, this will be an easy one to do because I won't have to spend a lot of time reading it right it's just mostly reference tables uh, and images and things like that so this will be a fun one um, all of the table of contents is found here on uh, the website, which is handy, so you can see all of the uh, Kabbalic, Thelemic, Planetary, the, the, the whole nine yards. This is also uh, has an introduction by Marco Visconti. Um, and yeah, there's lots of good stuff in here. So, and there's a lot of stuff in here too that I like when I was glancing through the table of contents that I thought, huh, that's something I'm not really um, dug into a whole lot of, or it's something that I'm familiar with at a very, like, surface level, so this might be a good way for me, especially being a very visual person, to um, really sink my teeth into some topics that I maybe have avoided because they are, um, you know, difficult to, to comprehend, so... Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. This one uh, is on its way. So, and you can pick it up on Amazon as well as um, directly from uh, the publisher on their website. So there's that. Um, <laughs> thank you, Maddie. <laughs> um, hello, hello. Oh, thank you. Yeah, new glasses. I've had a couple new pairs. I got a couple new pairs uh, last month, was it? So they're fun. I was long overdue for an eye exam and uh, new new frames. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have a new text from our friends over at Black Letter Press. This is uh, Gustav Theodore Fechner. I think that's how you say it. It's Fechner. Um, his uh, book, The Little Book of Life After Death. Um, this was... Uh, written in 1836 i believe if i if i remember correctly um and it's a new translation if i if i am not mistaken i don't remember now um i can't remember gustav fechner was a uh yeah so he uh 1881 to 1887 was a pioneer in the emerging field of scientific psychology and philosophy of the mind but like many of his peers, he also applied his intellect uh, to the question of survival of the human personality after death. It was published just prior to the emergence of spiritualism um, and spiritism on the one hand and the occult revival on the other. Like later scientific and philosophical figures inspired by these movements, such as William James, Thomas Edison, and Oliver Large, Fechner explores the concept of life after death with a rigor and a serious intent that, uh, in, <laughs> that with rigor and serious intent at odds with present day academic, um, incredul in I can't ever say this word, incre incredulity. I think that's uh, I can't I can't speak today i need more coffee i need more coffee um but yeah black letter press always has amazing texts uh the book looks gorgeous i love the william morris in the background <laughs> um their texts are always like their their books are like works of art in and of themselves um and we all know i have a slight obsession in uh, topics and conversations about life after death and past lives and things like that. So this one really caught my attention. Um, I was not familiar with it before they announced uh, the pre-order for this. And um, yeah, I'll be incredulous. I can't ever say that word. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like one of those words that just like it's stuck in the back of my mouth in credulity i can't ever say it i've never been able to say that i still remember i believe it was one of um the the first time i like really struggled with that word i will never forget this 
it was in uh like my early undergraduate career <laughs> and i was in like a, a like a lit class and that came up and i was like i just can't say this word i just i can't there's something about this word that my mouth cannot wrap around <laughs> so oh my good goodness incredulity <laughs> everyone's giving me like phonetic i love it i can't ever say it whenever i read it and and then i've gone and like listened to people say it and it's just it doesn't it doesn't sink in i can't do it <laughs> um so he asks oh benedict cumberbatch trying to say uh, penguins oh my god I have not seen that, but I'm going to Google that as soon as this video, as soon as we're done live streaming this. Every, I feel like everyone has like a word that they can't say. <laughs> it's uh, inevitable. All right. So yeah, Black Letter Press, check that one out. Oh, this one. This one, you guys, I am super excited about. Okay. So this is by Inner Traditions. Um, this is the complete introduction to magic, which like, what a title, right? Like the complete introduction, not an introduction, not, uh, you know, just another introduction to magic, but the complete introduction to magic. Like, okay, this better be good, right? Um, it's being published, like I said, by Inner Traditions. Um, and this book is, uh, it's a two, sorry, a three volume series. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's got some really interesting stuff in it. So this one really caught me off guard. I was like, I, I hadn't really heard about this and I was perusing Inner Traditions uh, site and it popped up and I was like, what, what is this? Um, and, and it's something that I've been really excited about. So I really wanted to make sure that, you know, I shared it with you guys. Um, so volume one includes translations of rare texts alongside rites, practices, and magical knowledge, including instructions for creating an etheric double, speaking words of power, uh, interacting with entities, and creating a magical chain. Volume two offers studies of the mystery traditions throughout history and shares... Um, wisdom and rigorous selection of initiatory exercises, which I think is really interesting. And then volume three explores the esoteric practices for individual development and realization of immortal and divine potential handed down from a primordial tradition. Um, so in, this is from 1927, uh, Julius Evola and other leading Italian esotericists formed the mysterious UR group. The purpose of this group was to study and practice ancient rituals from the mystery traditions of the world, both East and West, in order to attain a state of superhuman consciousness and power to allow them to act magically on the world. Um, many years later, in 1971, Evola gathered these essays into three volumes. So the, this is a an older text, which is something to kind of be aware of. It is translated by Jocelyn Goodwin. Um, and this is the, uh, from my understanding and, and what it says here, the first time it's been available in English. So, the, you know, this is kind of like um, the uh, Golden Dawn texts, right? When the Golden Dawn texts got published, kind of the same idea, right? You have a kind of magical lodge from a historical perspective uh, where things got written down and handed down and now they're kind of being published um, to the wider world. So, um, <laughs> nearly complete, but not quite modern. I like that. Nearly complete, but not quite modern. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it does look really interesting. And the thing that really caught my attention about this was that second volume, which offers, you know, it says mystery traditions throughout history um, and shares initiatic wisdom, right? And exercises. So I thought that was really interesting because a lot of times when you get like, um, when you know when you're looking at like thelemic practices or you're looking at ceremonial practices or golden dawn practices or anything like that it's it's kind of very one uh like one path focused and this one seems to be a little more breadth right maybe less depth i don't know um but i like that broader perspective which is really interesting to me so 
I'll definitely be picking this up. Um, it is three volumes, so it is a little bit on the pricey side, hardbound, of course. So, um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. it. Looks the cover looks nice. I'm assuming this is kind of like the, the box cover, so we'll see. All right. Last but certainly not least, we have the sixth. Uh, book to Kenneth Grant's uh, reprinting of his series. So this is by uh, Starfire Publishing. And if you're not familiar with Kenneth Grant, he's probably, uh, he, he's a really big influential writer um, kind of in the, the late, the later part of the, the turn of the most recent century, not the turn of the last century, but <clears throat> this specific one was originally published in 2002, um, but he's written a whole kind of series, and this is the sixth one, if I'm not mistaken. This one, so I have not read four, five, or six. I've read his first three books. They're intense, to say the least. <laughs> um, so I do have four and five. Uh, I don't have, actually have a, a vintage copy of four. I don't have um, any version of the Ninth Arch, so this I will be picking up to kind of complete that set of that series of books. Um, <laughs> so yeah, these are kind of, they're a little out there. <laughs> um, the first time I read Count of Grant, I was like, what did I just read? <laughs> what did I just read? Um, there, I would definitely file them into the more advanced category of things so if you're kind of a baby occultist i maybe maybe would lean away from these now but i would definitely put them on your list and pick them up at some point um kenneth has a really interesting uh perspective on a lot of topics and a lot of um a lot of things are uh kind of almost how do I how do I want to how do I describe this like the his work really kind of like is it's very it's very broad and deep at the same time and it's very thought provoking right so um there is art by this by the way in this uh, book and they're being reproduced in color which if I'm understanding correctly this uh, this edition will be in color and I believe the older ones were not so yeah <laughs> so yeah the final volume of uh, the Typhonian trilogies it comprises an extended analysis and commentary upon um, the Book of the Spider, uh, a transmitted text which was received in the course of the workings of the new Isis Lodge in the 1950s. Uh, Grant's novella Against the Light uh, casts some of these themes of um, the Book of the Spider into a fictional form. Uh, a brief account of the background can be found here. And then it gives some background on the magical lodge and things like that. So, yeah, he's a he's a pretty prolific writer. So, um, <laughs> sometimes my brain run, runs away. That's okay. And I believe he he did pass away just recently. I think he passed away in two thousand twelve or thirteen. Um. But the Magical Revival is probably his most well-known text. Um, and that one is definitely more um, approachable. It is definitely more on the advanced side of things. And it kind of presents things... Uh, he, he kind of does like an analysis of pre-Christian uh, like occult traditions um, that have like re re had it like a resurgence in more modern times 
So if you want a taste of Kenneth Grant, by the way, if you're if this this kind of thing has interested you, um, I would definitely check out the Magical Revival, which is the kind of the first text in that like series of of books. So yeah. Uh... Let's see, Sophie asks in chat, silly question, but do you shelve all your books or do you have other ways of storing them? All my books are shelved, yeah. There's, I have the two bookshelves in the corner behind me, the wall of books there. I have a book, uh, a barrister bookcase that contains a lot of my more, like my nicer books, things like from indie publishers and like this, like my Troy books and things like that. Um, I have a whole case and cabinet over here that has all of my really, like, more collectible um, tarot. I have another smaller bookcase that contains all my mythology and all of my, like, oversized books because it, it has adjustable shelves. And then in behind the curtain there, which is a little, like, storage closet, I have, like, a, it's... A, originally a, like a dvd cabinet and that contains uh all of my indie published tarot decks and then i have a set of the only thing i guess i don't really shelf is i have a set of drawers like right here <laughs> under my desk that contains like all of my um my mass market kind of paper box tarot decks so i, I do need to do a a behind the scenes tour i really need to do a room tour so <laughs> i mean this this is an, a, a normal sized room this isn't like um anything crazy by any such stretch of the imagination the room is um it's a nine by ten room is the dimensions of the long walls and then of course the corner pops out um back there that comes forward that of course is is shorter so i mean it's not a huge room by any uh stretch of, of the imagination do i have a deck count i'm over 600 so but i've been collecting for a very long time i've been collecting tarot decks since i was 13 before if you're new here <laughs> for a very long time a lot of a lot of my deck collection came from um gifts and things like that so That includes oracles, by the way. That's not just tarot. That's tarot and oracle. And historical decks. Things like this. Um, this is uh, the Oracular Cards of Change, which is the, one of the new old cardamancy decks from um, Los Garibayo. So... <laughs> So that's it for books. Let's move on um, to oracles. And I did have a question um, in chat. Emerald Fern asks, do you read playing cards or Lenormand? I have done some playing card reading. It's not definitely not something I consider myself an expert in. Um, Danny Mystic is far more versed in playing cards than I am. Um, I have read I I have read Lenormand. I don't really read Lenormand all that often. It was not a system that I really connected with. Um, I tend to use like Geomancy more often than I use Lenormand, to be perfectly honest, or Runes. Um, but I, I do know Lenormand enough to know how to read it. Is it something that I do quite often? No, I do it every once in a while. There's very kind of specific circumstances. Like when I, when I want to do a reading that's like a big picture, like a... Like, almost like a Farmer's Almanac style, like, perspective of things to come. That's usually when I use the Lenormand. Um, and and other than that, like, when it's just kind of like everyday stuff, I tend to tend to work with the tarot more. Or when it's, like, more highly spiritual or things like that. So, yeah. Okay. Let's move on to Tarot and Oracle. So, the first one, the first one you guys, uh, I am, I'm really... <laughs> really kind of excited about i don't like i don't know why i'm this excited for this but i am 
feel like I'm missing something on my list here. Hold on. Hold on. Give me one check. One sec. That one, that one, that one. Okay. So, <laughs> this one, this one, you guys, the Bob Ross Oracle, a happy little <laughs> deck and guidebook. I'm kind of really excited about this. I don't know if this is something I'll ever use, like, professionally in terms of, like, giving people readings with, but I'm, I'm a huge Bob Ross fan. Um, I grew up watching Bob, in fact, Bob Ross is, like, a huge influence on me going to, like, art school and painting and, like, all of that, and so this is, like, <laughs> this is, like, a combination of my love of art and, like, my love of, like, tarot and oracle kind of mushed into, like, one thing. I honestly, <laughs> I don't have high expectations for this other than just, like, the complete nostalgia, happy, warm feeling, like, thing. And this is absolutely not the type of Oracle deck I would use for a serious reading. But this just is, just is fun. Like, I couldn't not mention this because it's, it really does encompass a lot of the things I talk about on this channel, right? Art is a big part of this channel. And so I had to mention this one because... <laughs> I mean, it's Bob Ross, right? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's Bob Ross. It's just it's just fun. So, um, <laughs> the Bob Ross Oracle. I'm I'm pretty pretty excited about this. <laughs> who who doesn't love some Bob Ross? I feel like Bob Ross would actually really like this deck. <laughs> um. I challenged, I'm being challenged in chat to do a serious read. I mean, I'm sure I could, but I, I don't know, like, how overtly positive, I'm sure it's overtly positive. I doubt there's any sort of, like, negative aspect to this deck, um, and so that would present itself in a challenging way, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a big Oracle person either, but yeah, this one, I, I mean, I just have to get just because, you know, Bob Ross. It's Bob Ross. So, <laughs> his show, yeah, his show is very meditative, and ve and it does, like, I will put Bob Ross on in the background when I'm, like, struggling to sleep, because Bob Ross will just put me to sleep. It's like, it was, it was like the OG ASMR before ASMR was a thing, right? Like, Hearing him, like, mix paint on, like, his little, like, you know, his giant acrylic palette and, like, you know, working the canvas with, like, his palette knife, like, and he doesn't talk during those things, so all you get is, like, the ASMR of him painting. It's, like, the best. <laughs> it's absolutely the best. So there's there's that one for you. Uh, this next one I'm pretty excited about for those uh, tarot history fans in chat right now, like me. Um, this next deck is uh, the next release from Los Scarabeo in their Anima Antiqua series. So this is the Minchiare, um, and this is from Bologna in 1775. Um, it is that kind of more orange Minchiare. Um and yeah, I'm excited. I I have all of the Anima Antiquas so far released, and I will absolutely be adding this to my collection. I do have several other Minchiate decks, and the Minchiate is kind of one of my favorite historical decks because it does have like all the zodiacal cards and things like that included in it. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited for this. <laughs> Lisa, so much, it's very, like, it's so funny because, like, when I look at this, like, it's very 70s almost, like, that color palette is very, like, I'm pretty sure my grandmother's kitchen was this color palette when I was growing up. <laughs> um, but the, these decks are always really nice, they're always uh, well printed, um, I love the box design on these decks, and um, they always do a really good job with these. So if you're looking for more like affordable <coughs> historical tarot decks, now these are limited edition, um, but if you're looking for like more affordable historical tarot decks that maybe aren't as expensive as like um, like the Berti decks or the uh, um, oh my god, I'm having a total brain fart right now. <laughs> Il Menegello or the Il Menegello decks. 
uh, which are kind of two of my favorites, or the Eves or Nod decks, which all of those um, come over from Europe, and they can be a little on the more expensive side. This is a great alternative to that, so a little more mass market produced. So yeah, pretty excited for this one. Um, yeah, uh, Jonathan, like, with, with regards to, like, the whole Bob Ross company thing, I mean, you know, <laughs> I like Bob Ross for liking Bob Ross, right? Um, and it is what it is. Uh, times were very different then, too. We have to remember that, so... Not to say that it's okay, it absolutely is not. But if you have not, for those of you in chat who don't know what we're talking about, if you have not, there's a deck, a, a documentary, a documentary on Netflix about Bob Ross, and it talks about kind of the, the his background and history and kind of uh, the behind the scenes of his show, and it's really enlightening. I would encourage you guys to go watch it. Um, so if he says any historical decks you would absolutely recommend. I mean, I think the Minkiati is one that I I would encourage a lot of people to look at because it had a larger influence, I think, on modern tarot than uh, a lot of the other ones. The Dudal, of course, is kind of like the bread and butter of historical decks. Like, there's like 50 million versions of the Dudal out there. Um, if you're interested in uh, historical tarot decks specifically... Speak of the Devil, Justin Michael just joined chat. Hello, Justin. Um, his channel is pretty much devoted to historical tarot, um, and he's got uh, a lot of really wonderful um, reviews of historical tarot decks and things like that, so you can go check his channel out. Um... <laughs> a documentary. <laughs> that would be fun. It'd be really interesting to see, like, a documentary of like uh uh how a tarot deck is made right or like yeah that'd be really cool okay next up on the list we have the tarot of tales um this is being published by seco books um and this one looks really interesting um we've we kind of looked at this back when it was way first kind of announced, um, but I, there's a lot more kind of images and things like that uh, available for it now, and it looks really beautiful. I love the borders. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I know some of y'all hate borders, but I love these borders. The images are really kind of beautiful. Um, this one just looks really interesting, and I really wanted to kind of highlight it. Um this is a collaboration between veteran tarot reader and author uh, Melinda Lee Holm and uh, illustrator uh, Rowan Daniel Eason. Um, and yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Now, this publisher, I will say the quality of their decks historically have not been great. <coughs> <coughs> the cardstock usually is not the best um and yeah I've, I've never been kind of overtly happy with the quality but it does seem like they're stepping things up um so this one yeah i'm i am oops cautiously optimistic i think is what i would describe myself with this one um i love the art and it looks like there's so you know some classic stuff talked about in the book look at the bumblebee with the top hat isn't he cute he's so cute so yeah we got some some good information on this this is being released in march by the way for those of you who are wondering so yeah i'm really interested in this one so check this one out if you have not already okay uh oh oh this one I'm actually pretty pretty hyped about this one. Okay, so this is a new release from uh, Los Garbeo that's being, of course, distributed by Llewellyn. They do all the distribution here in the United States for Los Garbeo. Um, this is the Circe Tarot. So for anyone who 
has an interest in uh, Greek, Greco-Roman mythology, you'll definitely want to grab this one. Um, this it, this is one of those decks that is like, oh, this is kind of new. Like, the art style is something we haven't seen before. Uh, the th Like, the theme of the deck is not something we've seen a whole lot of before. It does seem to very much be following the traditional Rider Waite Smith um, modus operandi, right? But utilizing the legend of Circe and and sort of that whole narrative. So I think this one will be really interesting. Um, and I'll be I'll be picking this up. Yeah. <laughs> So there's that one. Check that one out if you haven't already. And last, but certainly not least, um, we have a new deck being produced by um, the same creator as Tarot Emblemata, for those of you who may recall that one, Urania Press. Um, they are making a sort of tarot playing card style um, deck that is a reproduction of a deck that's uh, like almost 300 years old now at this point and it is called the Star Lore Tarot. Um, it looks really beautiful. Um, I'm really excited for this one. So yeah. Star Lore is a 56 card deck of revived and remastered engraved illustrations from the historical artwork that is over 300 years old, features 60 constellations of the northern and southern hemispheres, and their mythological and symb symbolic figures such as Cassiopeia, Hercules, Orion, Draco, Ursa Major, and many more, including 12 constellations of the zodiac that mark out the path of the sun appears to take through the year, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Sagittarius, Capricorn, us, Aquarius, and Pisces. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about this one. So it's it is it is kind of a tarot, but not. It's 56 cards. Um, so it's definitely one of those. If you if you watch the most recent Three Fat Readers episode where we talked about uh, decks that break the tarot system, um, this is one of those decks. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks really beautiful. Yeah. And this is on Kickstarter right now. It is uh, funding. So if you guys are interested in picking it up, there's lots of really cool um, extras and goodies. And you can get prints and stickers. And um, there is a guidebook that goes with it. And the whole nine yards. So, And they always do a really good job. The backs are lovely, actually. I kind of like this like marbled... Um, gold flecked back i thought that was pretty clever they of course are not reversible but i don't think this is a deck you would use reversals for anyways it's definitely something you would um read more like a playing card deck so yeah it looks really gorgeous here's some of the goodies you can get those are stickers Uh, here's Tarot Emblemata, by the way. I think if you did miss the Tarot Emblemata Kickstarter, you can pick that up um, through this Kickstarter and the Tarot uh, Chimera. So they have produced a lot of a lot of uh, stuff before, and they've been very successful. So I have zero worries about this reaching my doorstep um, via Kickstarter. It will be available through purchase on their website, of course, after the Kickstarter uh, is done. There's six days to go. It's fully funded. Um, they do tend to give a little bit of a discount. I think it's like 10, 10 or 15% if you back the Kickstarter. So if you want a little discount, this is a good good place to get it. Um, so yeah. That's it. That's all I had for you guys in terms of new stuff that I'm excited for. So, yeah. 
Uh, are there any questions? Let's see. Kay has one. On average, what percentage of decks that you purchase for yourself do you also sell in in the boutique? So the boot. I have very. I have a very small space in the boutique, um, and so I can't have like a massive wall of tarot. Someday when I have my own store, it's brick and mortar, and I can have a giant wall of tarot. That will be the thing, but. <clears throat> the case of tarot that I have now is I have kind of, uh, I, I tend to curate it more, uh, like I'll grab, um, it's definitely much more mass market. I do carry some indie, uh, stuff. So I have some local to Colorado independent creators in there. I also like, um, uh, I also have uh, a few oracles and things like that, but it's but by no means comprehensive. I keep like um, mostly kind of newer stuff that people are excited and talking about, and then I also keep kind of like the writer dies in there. So things like the Aquarian Tarot, um, Borderless Rider Waite Smith, uh, the traditional Rider Waite Smith. Um, I keep a couple of like traditional Marseilles in there. Um, uh, things like that so it's it, it's kind of that's kind of how i curate it for the shop um specifically for the boutique so because i don't have i basically have like a corner cabinet that houses all the tarot um yeah let's see trio of witches says dustin midnight magic a tarot deck of mushrooms oh i don't i don't think i've looked at that I will check that out. I will add that to my list to, to check out. Thank you. Speaking of, if you do have suggestions, if you guys are watching uh, live in chat right now, or if you're watching this in the future, if you're watching live in chat, come back and leave a comment with your suggestion for me to check out, because then I won't forget it. Because, <laughs> um, you know, we're doing doing the live thing right now. So the best, the best way to make sure I check things out is to come back and leave a comment after the video gets posted. So when the live stream ends, it'll get posted as a like rewatchable normal video, like almost right away. So you just like refresh my YouTube page and you can leave a comment then. And that's the best way to do it. If you're watching in the future on replay, leave a comment down below with things that you guys are excited about or if there's things you want me to check out. I love getting your guys's feedback and suggestions because there's like there's so much out there that like i don't see everything and i don't think anyone does even the people who do more comprehensive kind of versions of this video where they just like go through like all the new things there's stuff that like i find that isn't on their list right um and things like that so i love getting your guys' suggestions so please come back and leave a comment um oh yeah don't forget to thumbs up the algorithm gods really really love thumbs ups it really does help the channel and the community to grow so i'd really appreciate it if you did give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it also if you are watching and you are not subscribed please consider doing so it will um <laughs> send you notifications for when you uh, for when i post new content um and it's a good way to support the channel so uh, let's see. Marie says, uh, this might hurt. Yeah. So we, I think we talked about this might hurt going mass market a while ago. Um, as well as the Citadel Oracle, which is really exciting. Um, Emerald Ford says, do you know about Crosscrow books? Yes, I do. Actually, Crosscrow has sent me a couple of books, uh, for review. And I think in the last episode or the one prior to this, we did a, like there were, I showcased like three or four of the upcoming releases in Cro that Cross Crow um, is producing. So yeah, they're wonderful. They are the nicest people, by the way. Their team is so lovely. Um, I love I love them. <laughs> and they have they have great titles. So check them out if you haven't. Yeah. Uh, have I played Persona 5 Royal? It has its own deck. No, nope, I've not played Persona 5. Tarot and Witchery said, I took Kickstarter off my phone last year. was expensive. Oh, no. Oh, no. There was a lot of really good tarot that came out on Kickstarter last year, though. There really was. So, yeah. 78 watching. We are a full tarot deck. <laughs> and I'm the fool. 
Uh, Taro Saga says that they uploaded the first video on your channel. Congratulations! That's awesome! Any tips for new ones? I mean, you just kind of have to figure out what your channel is about, right? <clears throat> um, and and kind of go from there. You'll figure it out, though. Just keep making videos. I, I think, like, for me, I make videos because I enjoy making videos. Like, that's the... That, it's it's like a hobby and a pastime and it's something I enjoy doing and I like the artistic and creative aspect of it. Um, you know, I would say if you're doing it to get famous or get rich or something like that, good luck. <laughs> it's, especially with a, a niche topic like the occult or um, the tarot. Um, but yeah. Yep. Make, yeah, make what you would want to watch. That's a good thing. That's a good way of putting it, Lisa. I agree, yeah. Make what you enjoy making. Make them for you first. First and foremost. And then, and be authentic, right? Don't be fake. Um, how do you guys even find decent decks on Kickstarter? So, on Kickstarter, if you go to Kickstarter, um, up on the top where it says Discover, you can scroll down through all the categories, and there's a specific... Um, category now of course you guys can't see this because can i move this over well that kind of there we go <laughs> there's a category now uh specifically for magic and divination so you can see it here at the bottom of the screen and if you click on this it will pull up all the kickstarters that are tagged as magic or divination so you'll actually find stuff you know like books and uh, like other things art and <laughs> all kinds of stuff but that's the first way the other way i find stuff is just by like searching tarot on kickstarter or getting recommended things by you guys so that's how i find them um oh thank you justin that's very kind any other questions you guys Before we get things wrapped up. If I can get more coffee, I need more coffee. <laughs> My brain today, I didn't sleep very well last night. I had very peculiar, not like bad dreams or good dreams. They were just strange dreams. Um, and they weren't even like... There wasn't even like subconscious messages or anything. It was just quite literally like the like weird dreams. But that tends to, so I did uh, take my sleeping tea last night, and that tends to happen whenever I take that because it, um, there's some pretty potent sedative like herbs in there, and so whenever I drink that tea, it gives me weird dreams. <laughs> Um, Emerald Friend says that they're backing the Animal and Botanical Tarot that's coming out on the 20th. I've checked that one out. It does look nice, but Animal Decks are not my cup of tea. Um, have you noticed more new releases in certain months? There definitely has been an up... There's... We've talked about this on 3 Fat Readers a little bit. There's definitely an increase in the uh, kind of amount of stuff that is coming out due to the rise in popularity in like occultism spiritualism tarot all that kind of stuff um some of it's really good some of it's most certainly like cash grabby so you know buyer beware and that's why you know when i do these videos i try to be very selective and intentional with the things that i showcase right because i really want to make sure that i'm sharing things that i have interest in in buying i would say that like of all of the things that I showcase on these videos, like, I usually buy over half of them, right? And in terms of books and tarot decks and things, I definitely don't buy all of them. Um, but I, I do most certainly buy a lot of them. And, and that I do very intentionally. So, yeah. Um, sensationally Social with Beth. Have I seen the Blue Apple Tarot on Kickstarter? I did. It didn't really appeal to me. I thought it was just kind of odd. Um... Animal Fold, that's where we're different. Yeah. I, yeah, Emerald, you do use a lot of animal decks. And then, see, that's okay, right? Like, 
everybody likes um, different things. <laughs> Justin, I just made Steven get a coffee too so I could get a second cup. Um, so he says, do you purge often or do you tend to keep the decks you buy? It's very rare that decks leave my collection. Um, I, <laughs> I very intentionally am very selective about the decks that I bring into my collection. Um, so it's very rare that things leave. It's not to say that they don't, they, they, they most certainly do. But a lot of times, if there is a deck that's coming out, for example, a lot of times I don't just buy decks to show on the channel, right? Um, if, like, the, here's a good example. The Star Codes Astral Oracle was a deck that came out a while ago. Um, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, that looks really good. But I'm not sure if I need another Oracle deck that's astrology-themed. And, you know, it's Hay House, so it could just not be that great. And so I'm going to sit it out for a while. And so instead of just like picking it up and jumping on the hype train for clip clicks and being like, hey, look at the new deck, right? Um, I waited for a while and I watched videos and I watched rev other people's reviews and things like that. And um, it intrigued me enough at that point that I purchased it and picked it up. And so a lot of times like in my process of curating my collection, right, <clears throat> a lot of it stems from... Um, doing that kind of a process of like, okay, here's this new thing. If it's something that I know I'll obviously like, like when Terra Volatile came out, like I knew I was going to like that, so I instantly got it, right? But if it's something that I'm on the fence about, I'll tend to wait and watch other people's reviews or unboxings and things like that um, to get a better understanding of what it is I'm getting before I make the decision to buy or not. So that's kind of how I approach it. And there's no right or way, wrong way to do that, right? Like, if you want to buy all the new things and then move them on, that's okay too. Like, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, there's no there's no terror police, as I like to say, right? There's no right or wrong way to curate your collection. If you want to have all the new things and you can afford to do so responsibly, go for it. If you only want to have a Thoth deck and a Rider Waite Smith and that's all you ever need to read tarot, go for it. Um, if you want to be like me, where you are a collector and a reader, and you have a combination of both, go for it, right? Like, there's no there's no right or wrong way to do that. And any content creator or tarot person who tells you otherwise is full of shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Thoughts on pairing the Victorian Romantic? I'm not a big deck pairer. <laughs> I don't use Oracle decks very often, and um, I've talked about this a couple of times, but I don't tend to... Uh, I view like decks in my collection um, as tools, and so a lot of times I pick the right tool for the job. Um, I don't necessarily have to have like my, if I do a reading, because I do offer like a couple of read, like my Shadowscapes reading on, on my website is a tarot and oracle reading. So it, it utilizes both tarot and oracle. And sometimes it just depends on the reading and what the seeker or the querent is asking. Um, sometimes the decks that I select look great aesthetically together, especially, you know, I do have a very specific aesthetic to my collection. Um, but sometimes they don't, right? And it's more about, um, for me, it's more about picking the right tool for the job. So they don't always necessarily have to look good um, for that reason. So, And I don't, when I read with the Victorian Romantic, I tend not to use Oracle with that deck because that's that deck I use oftentimes for more like relationship-based questions. Um, and I tend not to use Oracle's. All that often for that because oftentimes oracles are more psycho spiritual so i tend not to gravitate towards that um yeah the terra volatile is awesome love it yeah don michelle is big on deck pairings and we love don michelle and her and her deck pairings but she definitely she she is all about the aesthetic uh a lot of times when it comes to like pairing up decks, so <laughs> tarot police, ooh, that might be a good emoji. Actually, I should add that to the list of emojis for the channel. So when we get memberships, I want to get a tarot police <laughs> like emoji. Um, so for those of you who don't know, we're going to be launching uh, memberships on the chat on the channel soon. And if you join the membership, 
um, at any tier, you'll get access to uh, custom emojis to use like in in live chats, and the tarot police one will be a good one. So I need to I need to write that down because I don't want to forget that. Um, we're going to put that in the planner down here. <laughs> yeah Don michelle does an amazing job of deck mods like i'm not a big deck mod person i've edged some decks i've trimmed a couple <coughs> like i have a trimmed version of the soft but she is like the martha stewart of deck modding <laughs> Um. <laughs> and for those of you who, who may not be familiar with Don Michelle, um, if you go to my YouTube page after the live stream ends, at the very bottom, if you scroll all the way down, I have a, a, a little panel on there that lists out all of like my favorite tarot tube people um including lisa pepez who's moderating a chat right now uh danny from danny mystic who and the three of us do the three fat readers uh channel uh don michelle's down there you'll also find like foolish fish and some other people so you can go check that out <clears throat> yeah all right i don't see any other questions in chat we're a little over an hour so we're gonna get things wrapped up here but if you do have another question or anything like that please feel free to come back and leave a comment down in the comment section below you're also more than welcome to reach out to me via any of the social media platforms facebook instagram um here on youtube whatever you're comfortable with shoot me an email um, anything like that so <laughs> um and yeah i hope that all of you are having a wonderful sunday I really appreciate each and every one of you spending your Sunday morning with me and hanging out and checking out all the new releases in tarot and occult books. I do know that Lisa Pepez uh, will be going live later this afternoon. So if you want to hang out some more with uh, some fun folks in the tarot community, be sure to go check out uh, Lisa's live later this afternoon with her wife. Um, it's always fun. <laughs> There's always trouble. Um, and yeah, I appreciate each and every one, one of you so, so very much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And remember that everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. So be kind to each other. We'll see you guys back around YouTube. Bye, everybody.